wisdom for successful parenting. Let us believe that the next generation will not destroy itself. By parents taking biblical responsibility in securing their destiny. Biblical wisdom for successful parenting. Interestingly, the book addresses all areas of life. He said, go to the temple and speak to them all the words of this life. All. All. It carries all that pertain to life and godliness. All. Biblical wisdom for successful parenting or impactful parenting. Training is part of our covenant responsibility in the Abrahamic covenant. And Abraham trained his servants, born in his house, and they were turned into giants. Genesis 14, 14. Abraham trained his servants, born in his house, and they took on the army of a nation and overran them. Training is part and parcel of our covenant responsibilities in the Abrahamic covenant. Train up a child in the way that he should go, Proverbs 22, verse 7. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. While we're growing up, a child misbehaves, the teacher will say he lacks home training. He lacks home training. It was a common language for from teachers. You lack home training. I will cane you now. They didn't cane you properly when you are coming from. You lack home training. So, just compare the value of raw crude oil with refined oil. So without training, man remains crude. It takes proper training to bring the treasure in a man out. It takes proper training. Somebody is tall. It's a potential basketball star. <laughs> but that doesn't make it one. He can break his back the first day. He needs training for his height to have value. Many parents have absconded the training aspect. They think sending a child to America is an achievement. They think so. This man we are looking at has plenty of money. Righteous money. Trackable money. It's just like a pastor saying, I went to Jamaica, I came to Sudan, I went to Australia. Is that ministry? <laughs> you are an explorer. <laughs> you are trying to discover nations that have been discovered. No, get on the sea, go and find new islands. <laughs> and I just came back from um, California. I'm likely to get back there, uh, I think next month. PA, come. What time should I be in California? <laughs> you know, those things used to be significant. Then, you know, when you earn a degree in those days, you name the country where you got the degree from. BA Atlanta. <laughs> we are in Atlanta, is it in the market? <laughs> <laughs> they need to know that your BA is not from any crude university. When the first man in my village returned from uh, UK, 
they met him with Dane God. <laughs> At the entrance of the town. <laughs> you can come from anywhere and nobody knows where you're coming from. <laughs> Praise God. I wasn't there, I was informed of the drama. And oh, hey. Oh. <laughs> a student who has just come, has not got a job. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to show you some examples of great men that just won't take responsibility. And their children became disasters. None of our children will become a disaster. Yeah. Abraham did not pet his children, but was committed to training them. God said in Genesis 18, verse 17 to 19, For I know him, verse 19, that he will command his children. Verse 19, please. He will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. I know him. I know him. I know him. He shall command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. To do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. I know him. He will command. He will not pet. Children you pet today will pester you tomorrow. Wake up! And take responsibility. And if you're Abraham's children, what do you do? You do the works of Abraham. John 8 and verse 39. Eli the high priest, ghost, in not taking responsibility to train his children. They ended up as sons of Belial, area boys. For Samuel 2, verse 22 to 25. For Samuel 2, 22 to 25. Now Eli was very old and had all that his sons did unto Israel. And now they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Watch. Why do ye so things? Eh? For I hear of your dealings by all these people. Ah, it's no good, oh, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the lost people to transgress. What of you? If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Because of the way he said it, notwithstanding, they hack not unto him. Stop, old man, my friend. <laughs> That's Old Testament you are talking. We are living our life. Because of the way he came through to them. There's a word of difference between a trainer and a teacher. A trainer instructs, a teacher admonishes. A word of difference. Word of difference. Do you admonish people in aviation? You instruct them. No, I don't like this button. You don't need to like it. You don't press it, you are gone. You instruct. We had a situation down uh, within the family setting. And I stood against that step. And then one of my old people said, whatever a child wants to eat, cannot give it to Mark. I said, it's not true. It's an outdated proverb. <laughs> if your child wants to drink acid, is it on woman you Roman? No. You know, I say, it is not good, though. To take he said, but I want to take it. I'm telling you, it's not good. Though. Said, Stop that! Then all the demons will leave him. 
I'm not prepared to bury you. So stop it. Can I hear your amen? The suffering that that decision brought to our family. <laughs> In my place, when something is beyond the scripture, I say, oh, no, no. He had told Jehovah, oh, no, no. If you are not an instructor, you never succeed as a trainer. A trainer instructs, a teacher admonishes. The gap is wide. Anything given to a child outside of training is a wasted investment. Wasted investment. No success is sweet without rest at home and with your children. Rest. Otherwise, you'll be going to court every day from your business. They say, that's another case of No one here will suffer any form of heartache anymore regarding our children. Yeah. Now, verse 31 to 34 of 1 Samuel chapter 2. God took to Eli, Behold, the days come that I will cut off thy arm, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thy house. Ah, what? And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. And in all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. Why? And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from my altar, shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thy heart. And all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto you that shall come upon thy two sons. <laughs> Verse 35. On Ophine and Phineas, in one day they shall die, both of them. No one shall suffer any such devastation Amen. in this church forever. your children command them stop admonishing them when you see danger shout on them I can tell you this sir. I can't remember me being caned by my parents but I was fed on the word by my grandmother I sat at her feet and received instructions for living. So much so that one time I was sharing with um, my good friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch. He said, sir, can we write, can we write, jointly write a book on her? I smiled. It's me who know her now. <laughs> Amen. One day I was flying, we were going somewhere, and I entered the toilet. I remembered her and I started crying. It's gone years ago. It's not about killing people like a policeman. Or instructing them. You can't kill somebody to fly. You instruct them to fly. You can say, look at the plane. You mean you can't fly? <laughs> you can beat them to death. You can't fly. You know, they that walk, walk with many. They that run, run with a few. Or they that fly, fly alone. You walk with common sense, you run with principles, but you only fly with instructions. 
You only fly with instructions. Somebody's story is changing. <laughs> we shall never record any such experience like Eli in our midst. <laughs> Why am I using that? That's a high priest that speaks and it happens. But he didn't take responsibility. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. You see the end of irresponsibility. And the messenger answered and said, speaking to Eli, Israel is fled from before the Philistines, and there has also been a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Ophine and Phineas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. And, and it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell from off his seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck break, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy. And he had judged Israel for 40 years. No one here will fail God. Yeah. No one here will end his life in regret. Yeah. Let me say this, there is no school of learning that will replace home training. There is no school, forget it sir. We are now in days where I could send even primary school children abroad. As what? As what? So they are not even in touch with the meaning of life. Because the teacher only comes to class 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 4, 8. Goodbye. Go home. I'm going to see my children. <laughs> Everybody will bear his own body. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. My grandmother will say, those who don't sit up today, don't become masters tomorrow. As small as I was, I picked it. You can't find me on the street going, except on a mission. When you walk, you are added to experience. That's led to a great future. I had it. Please wake up. It's not, it's not the way it is. Anymore. There are too many strangers out on the street. Too many strangers. Small, small boys holding gone. And they don't have any training at home. They would read to their training. And then, hey my God. Mm. Don't have to. Can I tell you where the passion for Covenant University came? We got someone and took him to um, Arrow. And one statement was made by those who went. Well, we don't have any best space because young people are brought back home every day, mentally delayed because of drugs. Say, Jesus, are we destroying the future of our nation? That's how we take so hard matters on drug at Covenant. We have the testing kits. They test you, you have it. No discussion. No mention. Why? They were not equipped at home. They have no sense of values. And they told them to go and meet those two that don't have any sense of value. So they joined them. But none of your children, sir, if any of them is outside the country, please organize highly structured instructions that goes to them every time. Because only God can bend the dry fish without breaking it. The moment this stage is passed, it's passed. The moment this stage is passed, it's passed. For those who are just coming up to build their families, this is what it is. Wake up and build one. Wake up and build one.
can I tell you this? Neither my wife nor myself was involved in the marriage of any of our children. That this is who to marry, this is not who to marry. Never one of us decided with cause and program they should run in school. They were made responsible. Made responsible. Service with books and instructions. Life. Some are carrying 40 year old babies on their laps. You think that's success? That's blatant failure. Blatant failure. God forbid. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. You know, there are some students here at Covenant that can't come from Mekeja here on their own. They have to carry them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Glory to God. Now, we know somewhere to be an anointed one. We are told none of his words fell to the ground. From a child, he was hearing the voice of God. 1 Samuel 3, 19. But we saw this record in 1 Samuel 8, verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his first son was Joel, the name of the other second is Abia, and they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after money, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel, home to Ramah. Wait a minute. Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king. We can't, we can't survive this. To judge over us like other nations. Hmm. But the thing is, please, Samuel, when they said, Give us a king, because you didn't look after them, give us a king. You mean you don't know? Give us a king. That terminated the reign of priesthood in Israel. Now, hear what God said to them, to Samuel. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice. Show them. I can't do them. Don't you know your sons are not doing well? I can't do them. They are carrying bread all over town. I can't do them. Amen. That terminated the reign of priesthood in Israel. No one here will end his journey regret. Yeah. When we are grown up, they always say that children of pilot, uh, uh, you know, pastors are always wayward. No. It depends on what you put into each one of them. It's not only pastors, children of uh, managing directors, managers, civil servants, uh, or civil servants. <laughs> it depends. It's training. It's training. So you saw Eli and you saw someone. We must take responsibility in giving timely instruction, correction, and rebuke to our children. You know, children nowadays want to have their ways because you allowed it. Praise God. You allowed it. Timely before it's too late. Timely before it's too late. They that seek me early shall find me. Seek the Lord when he may be found. Call upon him when he's near. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Timely instructions. Timely corrections. Timely rebukes. Timely. 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 Proverbs 4, 11 to 13. Let's read that now, please. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I've led thee in right paths. 
When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. There's a time for everything under the sun. Let's wake up and take responsibility. What we sow into our children today will largely determine their outcome tomorrow. Let's sow good seed. Seed of sound moral. Seed of profound core values. So we can have rest tomorrow. For why the earthly minute? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Be not deceived. God is no more. Whatever a man sows today, that's what you will find tomorrow. You sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. You sow spiritual stuff, you reap life everlasting. So don't be weary in sowing spiritual seed into your children. Because you are reap it in due season if you faint not. Proverbs 31 and verse 25 to 28, we see the responsibility of women in this very unique way here. Strength and honor are her clothing. We're talking about the virtuous woman. And she shall rejoice in time to come. What is it? She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law. The law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household. She takes very detailed attention to the going on. And eat not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Let me celebrate my wife openly. For a job well done. A job well done. Our children growing up were running every Sunday evening seminar with her. We had Bible teachers hired for them. Not teaching school stuff. Teaching mandate stuff. We made them to read the, all the books I wrote, one by one, and summarize. We have zero, we've had zero concern over any of them. No one went to college without speaking in tongues fluently. No makeup. So we could trust them to hear from God to choose their courses of studies. We could trust them to get who their spouses will be. No arrangement. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. I only saw them when they brought them. I had no part in it. My part is, look, learn to hear from God. It's an asset for life. I remember giving them in those days the books on um, how to be led by the Spirit by Kenneth T. Um, and all that stuff. Then follow divine direction, um, understanding vision. Each one to take responsibility on time. And from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. I saw I was a king when I was 16 by redemption. And I started packaging myself in a kingly manner. 
When I want to go out, I'll check the king go out like this. No. David, go and change. I began speaking kingly words. Kings don't shout. They don't fight in their village. God said, that's the cabbage they fight in there. <laughs> Amen. I'm from a child. Thou hast known the holy scriptures. I knew when I was 19 that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If I didn't know that, I would have been destroyed the longest time. But every time I shall I will condemn. This is me. Stop that! In the name of Jesus, I curse you. When I feel a very evil air around me, I open fire. I knew that at 19. Somebody's told is changing. Amen. Let no communication be without the word. Let no communication be. You are, you are not a philosopher. You are a believer. <laughs> Inject what has translated your life so you don't regret your tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Well, every parent and every will be parents in this church shall be highly impactful parents. Amen. Not one of your children will pester your life tomorrow. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you see, you can't give what you don't have. You are either spiritual or carnal. You cannot be neutral. You can't give what you don't have. There are many carnal believers. They are believers, like Corinthian church people. He said, you know carnal? Don't you work as men? They, they, are, they are believers, but they are carnal. There is nothing spiritual about their perspective. And you know life begets life. So wake up. Peter says, such as I have, give I unto thee. Wake up. Only spiritual parents can sow spiritual seeds to the lives of their children, which is the only way to secure our generations after us. Let's wake up. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that gladly delights himself in his commandments, his seed also shall be mighty upon us. So it begins with the man, then his seed. It begins with the woman, then her seed. It begins with the man, then his seed. What you don't have, you can't pass on to them. Let's go after materials that talk about raising godly children. Training up a child in a way to go. Let's go after those materials. It will go a long way to boost our communication. Don't so be Father Christmas kind of parents. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Somebody's told is changing. Amen. You don't want to lose them tomorrow. Send them today. You don't want to cry tomorrow. Take responsibility today. The waywardness of Ophineas killed their father, destroyed their generation. It will never happen here. It will never happen here. It will never happen here. In conclusion, we must beware of what we do before our children because that is what they will take after. We must beware what we do with our children. That's what they would take after. They see you messing up their mother in their presence. What do you want to teach? It can't enter. It can't enter. They see you as a brawling lion. What do you want to teach? They are scared. They see you say somebody's coming, tell them I'm not around. And it's going up. What are they going to take away? And I said, all I have to do is enter heaven. They say, you too won't enter because 
<laughs> we are hearing you. <laughs> Amen. Beware what to do before them. Can I say this to you? And I'm saying it on the point of truth. Husband and wife living together will help the training to be highly qualitative. All this modern day life, wife in Australia, <laughs> husband in Ghana, is not the way to live. And they too shall be one flesh. Have you ever seen half a man being on the street? They said, that's half papa. <laughs> the other half has gone to quarrel. <laughs> this modern day technology it won't replace the truth it won't replace the truth if you fail at raising your children you are a failure mm. forget about what accolades you earn in our ministry it's impossible for your wife to be somewhere else under heaven and you somewhere it's a law Amen. You drop and join your wife, or your wife drop and join you. We don't want trouble. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Life, life is so simple. So simple. We are glad today in our family. No concern. The job was done when it ought to be done. And we are beholding it with our eyes open. Please walk. You know, we came out of the same stuff. We belong to the same father. Yes. We carry the same DNA. Yes. Let's take responsibility. Amen. Let's take responsibility. Tomorrow will be great. Amen. Greater than imagine, tomorrow shall be great. Amen. Greater than imagine, tomorrow shall be great. Amen. For your family, tomorrow shall be great. Amen. Well, I don't believe in that. Good luck. I've said my own. <laughs> I'm free. Come and give the Lord praise, everybody. Amen.